You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. And good evening. I'm Don Hudson and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now and topping that list. Knoxville's DCS office has been an influx really in the past few years regarding the amount of children they're serving and not enough foster families to fill the need. It is a problem they've seen really across the state, but here in Knoxville, there are twice as many children in need to care than there are available foster homes. Next on our list, a grand jury has indicted Julian Popoka. If you remember, back in May, he reportedly admitted to shooting his girlfriend at a cabin in Gatlinburg. The pair are from South Carolina, and according to Popoka, he and his girlfriend, Shelby Booth, got into some type of verbal fight, and that was when he shot her. Reports say that he was actually detained at the scene, then officers found Bo Booth dead after being shot several times. We'll keep you updated as we follow this case as well. Right, continuing our Big 7 coverage, the TWRA says that a body was discovered in Watts Bar Lake. The man since has been identified as boater Larry Ezel. Now, we were told that Ezel was found near an empty pontoon boat about three and a half miles north of the dam. He was 81-year-old resident of Rhea County. His body has now been transported to the Knox County Forensic Centers. The incident remains under investigation at this time. TWRA saying this is the 27th boating-related fatality this year. Next on our list, one person airlifted to the hospital after their car flipped on Norris Freeway. According to Rural Metro Fire Department, the wreck happened about 2 o'clock this afternoon. It was on the Norris Freeway near the Miller Road area. Now, first responders say the car flipped, trapped the driver in the car when it landed on its roof. Reports say that the crews stabilized the car, then freed the person safely. Other crews worked to land Lifestar and take the people that were in the accident to the trauma center. Rural Metro uh, says that all the emergency responders uh, that were in, wants to thank, I should say, all the responders who were involved in that crash. And we learned today about a deadly head-on crash in Roan County. The THP reporting and identifying the man killed as Eric White. Troopers saying the 59-year-old from Harriman was in a car headed east on the westbound side of the interstate, hitting a car coming from the other direction. That second driver was hurt but did survive. Next on the 7. After President, the President uh, Biden's recent decision to pardon federal marijuana possession convictions, states now are faced with the question if they should do the same and make those pardons. Well, here in Tennessee, a simple possession of marijuana is an A misdemeanor that can be punishable up to one year in jail. But the President is aiming to get states on board talking about the effects that these convictions can have on people. He adds it can impact people's employment, their housing situations, and bring about other negative consequences. WAT's legal analyst says, although nothing is changing in Tennessee yet, when it comes to federal charges, they are typically rare in our area. Now, the, only, the most frequent time that occurs if you're on federal property, such as a national park, preserve, et cetera. We also reached out to Governor Lee's office about this pardon. His press secretary responded saying, quote, we're not considering this in Tennessee. All right, while we're on the subject of drugs, our big story in the seven takes us to the Metro Drug Coalition. This Saturday, they are participating in the DEA National Prescription Medication Take Back program. It's happening tomorrow from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. Now, this is a chance for people to safely dispose of any unwanted medications, any syringes, medical supplies, which reduces the chance of any misuse or any accidents. The coalition is partnering with the Knoxville Police Department to make this event happen. Now, officials say data taken from 2015 to 2019 shows that pain medications were the single most frequent cause of pediatric fatalities. So when you bring your medications, they're destroyed in an environmentally friendly way. They're incinerated, so that keeps it out of the water supply. And then also, you know, children or pets can't get into it if it's not in your house. Now, so if you have medicine you are using at home, keep it locked up, keep it safe, away from the kids. But if you're not using it or if it's expired, then you probably should dispose of it properly. And you can do so again during this Take Back Day event. Again, this is happening tomorrow, 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. Just bring all those unwanted medicines and medical supplies to the Ingalls in Powell. 
and rounding out the Big Seven with some big orange coverage for you. The balls are on the road in Baton Rouge. The team still undefeated going into its fifth game of the season after beating Florida finally at home and then getting a bye week to regroup, right? But with Cedric Tillman's status in question, Jalen Hyatt is still the key to the Vols wide receiver group. The junior has broken out this season. In just four games, Hyatt has already exceeded all of his numbers from last year. And in Hooker's security blanket, for the lack of a better term, has typically been Tillman. But with the emergence of Hyatt, there is a contingency plan. I say one of us is growing up, um, you know, being more mature. Uh, and second is just preparation. You know, last year I wouldn't, um, there were some weeks where, you know, I felt like I wouldn't prepare for Saturday. Um, so, and not only that, just changing your mentality, um, that's another thing. So, really those three things, uh, I'll say that changed me as far as a player. Hyatt, Hyatt added that he is trying to stay humble as well. Remember, tomorrow's game is a noon kickoff, so it might be a little earlier than what you're used to. You'll be able to watch that game on ESPN. And before we toss things over to Ken, here's a look at a road game tradition. The pride of the Southland Marching Band stopping today in Chattanooga, putting on a performance at the city's AT&T Field. Okay, now we're going to check on the weather and see if it's going to give us a show. Meteorologist Ken Weathers joining us with that. Going to be very nice, Don, especially if you have some outdoor plans. Remember how cool it was last weekend where temperatures were mainly in the 60s? Very similar, but with sunshine instead of cloud cover like last weekend. We're clearing out slowly right now. Sun angle is getting very low, in fact, about to set. This is a live look from our Embassy Suites hotel camera back towards the Henley Bridge. It is mainly clear dry and really starting to cool off now after a high of 79 degrees today. But now that cold air is pouring in. We're 64 in Crossville, 66 in Jamestown, 73 in Knoxville, 72 in Gatlinburg, and 66 degrees in Middlesbrough. And these temperatures will drop pretty steadily over the next couple of hours from near 70 now all the way down through the 50s. And by first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to start in the mid 40s across Central Valley locations. Back across the plateau, though, 39 Crossville, 38 Jamestown. Jamestown, 37 in Oneida, same thing in Middlesbrough, and 38 in Jonesville, Virginia. Now, the wind probably stays up just enough tonight where frost is not a huge concern, but if you live in a sheltered area, maybe surrounded by some trees or down in a little lower spot, that's where you could see some scattered frost first thing tomorrow morning. So portions of Virginia, Kentucky, and the plateau, there's actually a better chance of frost tomorrow night. So Saturday night into Sunday. These are high temperatures tomorrow. That's it. So grab a jacket in the morning and really keep it handy. And don't forget the sunglasses. Plenty of sunshine. Highs at about 66 degrees and winds are out of the northeast tomorrow. Still at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, no rain is headed our way at least over the next few days through Tuesday. So it's fine to wash the car. But there are some rain chances finally in the seven-day forecast. And I'll tell you when those arrive coming up in just a few minutes. Don? All right, Ken, thank you. Well, moving on in the news this evening, a scheduled execution that was supposed to happen last night didn't happen. This is while an investigation into Tennessee's execution protocol continues. Now, court filings revealed that the state was not following its own protocols when conducting these executions. Now, back in April, Governor Lee ordered an independent investigation and he paused executions for the rest of the year. That decision, by the way, temporarily spared Gary Sutton. He was originally scheduled to be executed for killing a man in Blunt County. The governor's office said its independent investigation has not wrapped up yet. The office has not provided any clarification into when executions may resume. You know, OPEC is slashing oil production by about 2 million barrels a day to basically drive up prices. The group is led by Saudi Arabia and Russia and a few other countries, 13 in all. They're planning to change making that change, as you say, for November, uh, basically just in time for America's midterm elections. President Biden now considering releasing about 10 million barrels from the nation's strategic oil reserves, though it's unclear how much that would really help. Tennessee's average is 336 per gallon. That is up 14 cents in just two days. The YWCA of Knoxville honoring seven East Tennesseans last night at their 2022 Tribute to Women Awards Gala. They, Honorees range from across seven categories, arts and culture, business and industry, community enhancement, emerging leadership, racial and social justice, plus science, technology, and the environment. The whole gamut. The YWCA, by the way, just welcomed a new interim president, former Knox County Health Director Martha Buchanan. 
The Knoxville Symphony Orchestra, one of 30 orchestras selected by the League of American Orchestras to perform new commission work from female composers. The program is meant to uplift music made by women and introduce new composers to audiences across the country. KSO has been paired with Sarah Gibson to bring her to make this mountain taller to life during the 23-24 season. The full lineup of the orchestra's selections is available at the Knoxville Symphony Orchestra.com website. All right, tonight on the 7, we wanted to introduce you to this week's Pet of the Week. We're told he's a very special boy named Astro. Unfortunately, this special boy has some special needs and would be better suited for maybe a family with older kids and a few that maybe don't have other pets there either. Astro's about four years old and he's actually had a tough start to life and no fault of his own, but due to his owner's circumstances, he's bounced between a couple different families. As you can imagine, that leaves him a little scared, a little anxious, and takes a little bit of time for him to form a relationship with his humans, but once you do form that relationship, he is just the best boy. He you're so smart. Yeah, Astro is also part of the Bissell Pet Foundation's Empty the Shelter event that is going on through tomorrow. Any donation of any amount will waive the pet fees for adult pets. So be sure to check out Astro and all the other adult pets looking for a home. And you can actually save some money this time around getting a pet. All right, we are in the middle of Hispanic Heritage Month. And you can be part of the celebrations at this weekend's Ola Festival. It's kicking off tomorrow downtown at the World's Fair Park. The event celebrates diversity, Hispanic culture, and its many contributions to our community. On Saturday, the festival is open from 4 in the afternoon to 10 at night with a fireworks show, I believe, at 9 o'clock that night. The festival will also be open from 11 in the morning until 6 in the evening on Sunday. And speaking of Hispanic heritage, we want to you to join us for on Thursday, October 13th at 3.30 for our special, celebrating the cultures and contributions of Hispanic people who call East Tennessee home. That'll be right here on WAT6 On Your Side. As mentioned, it's been dry for a long time across East Tennessee, but some rain chances have finally returned to the seven-day forecast. I'll show you where those are when we come back.